Ooh, look, we got some Shero props here. Pretty sweet. All right, phone, stay still for me. Well, hey, welcome. We're actually uh, heading to my old stomping grounds here in Clearwater. It's bright and early here on that Wednesday morning, and I filmed a little bit this past week here, and we got a couple boats to look at in Clearwater, so I figured why not make the video today here since it's going to be 7 o'clock soon and I still got to edit all this stuff, so the fun of YouTube. Anyway, let's just get started. Well, all right, we've made it, and uh, we're on a 350 Sea Wraith. It's a 2024. It's a brand new boat, and it's got V10s on it, and we're actually just putting in a piece of carpet in the middle here, but I want to show you something first. So this is an SLX model, which is just a big bow rider. Make a 400 version of this, too. But look, we got V10s and the brand new electric steering. No more hydraulic stuff to worry about. I'm curious how these are going to hold up. They look pretty hardy here. You got a, obviously a giant actuator here and your harness. Well, main power wires probably in a couple harnesses, which are probably the CCMs and TVMs. And TVMs I'm sure they use the same stuff as the, uh, the old actuators. So this thing should be joystick driven. Yep, Sea Rage Classic dash here. All the same stuff, Boca Tech switches, dual screens. Those are uh, information displays, they call them. It's a dual screen setup. But enough of that. We are actually just putting this, we got all the seagrass carpet here. We are putting this middle piece in. I'm not sure what happened. It's lost in translation or blew out of the boat or whatever the case may be. We have a new one and we have to put the snaps in. And we got our special tools here. It's something I use, everybody uses different tools, but I like to poke at it. I'll show you why we use that in a minute here. And then we just got our snap tool here. Very simple. And there should be only be like six snaps here. Yeah, there's one, two, and three. So let me show you real quick what we do here, and then I'm going to jump to another video that I made a couple days ago. So the first thing you want to do here is make sure everything is square. I usually put my knees on it and kind of just push it out, make sure everything lines up good. Then you want to find where your snaps are at. There's one here. We're just going to kind of push down on it, feel where it's at. And that's what I use my little poker tool for. And you basically find where it's at. And I poke a hole in it right in the middle of where that's at. That kind of gives us our spot of where we want to put that snap. Then once you have that spot, you can use our other special tool here. Kind of hard to show you with one hand here, but basically this is just a poker tool. You usually wouldn't have anything like this unless you do canvas work all the time, but I've done this for a long time, so I have a couple special tools here all the time. But yeah, you just poke through that and it just snap through there. Now you got a big hole where we can apply our snaps here. So now that we have the hole in there, it's easy to just kind of push that snap in. These ones have little covers on them, or little protectors, plastic protectors. See how it fits real nicely in there. Now we can just take our other tool and then we stick our snap on the end here. And we're just going to press it in. You just want to make sure you line it up good. Make sure the snaps and the other piece are lined up or you're going to crush it wrong and you have to drill it out and redo it. But basically you just do this. I don't know if I'm strong enough with one hand here because you got to put a lot of pressure on it. I'm not sure if the phone's going to focus here, but we'll try. And that's it. Now you know you did a good job here as if uh, that little circle piece in there is nice and Perfect. So now usually what I do is snap it down and then just double check my squareness here and then just kind of start from one side and push my way to the other side. There's only six snaps here so this one's not too difficult. It can get a little weird when you get to these oddball pieces here and you got to put them down but it's definitely not the hardest thing in the world. Just take your time and make sure you uh, line everything up good. So let me finish putting in my snaps here and I'm going to jump to a video from a couple days ago that had a bad coil on the L6 Verado. So, jump to it. All right, we are here, and we have our port engine running. That's a 300 Verado. This is a 36 Aquila, and we have a short and number four uh, coil, which I'll show you on the computer here. I'm gonna turn this off anyways, because I don't want it to be too hot when I am trying to pull the plug and the coil out of it. So the customer just had the service maybe 10, 15 hours ago. Everything was fine, and then our port engine Started shaking, missing, didn't want to run up. So let's look at our freeze frame. We're lucky too that it was giving him this code right here on the screen on our dash. 
so we're able to bring what we need to. I got a new coil for it, which is number four coil short, basically, happened eight times. This is exactly how many hours are on it when it was running, 1500 RPMs. What, what happens is the coil breaks down, and when it gets hot, then you got no more spark, because you need that uh, really 50, 60,000 volts in order for that coil to work. So, so what I'm gonna do is clear all this. I'll clear all the module data, all the codes that are stored. We'll change out number four cylinder, coil here which I have a brand new one right here and when you do this you also want to change your spark plug this thing's under warranty so let me back off the camera here so because of that we're only changing one if this is your own boat and you don't have a warranty anymore I would recommend just replacing all six of these all new plugs so I'm going to replace the one plug just because it could foul out and you know, these are good plugs you just don't want to take the chance that the plug is also causing a problem so let me pull the cowlings real quick and we'll take a look. We'll pull the coil out, we'll look at the plug, see what's going on. Okay, I just want to show you something because you can do this kind of stuff yourself. It's only an eight millimeter bolt here that holds our coil on. Real easy to just disconnect these. I just have to push the little thing and on and off. But number four is right here. Number three is here. I pulled two of them. So I'm gonna show you the difference in plugs and what happens when a coil fails. Right here is our bad coil. Let me zoom in the camera guy right here and here's our plug it's completely black fouled out and that's just because it's not burning this coil was failing so it's not allowing this plug to spark and then you get this black soot on everything this is why I want to change the plug so that we don't have a problem with this too here is number three right above it look at how clean that is that one's burning good you got a little bit of white on top and she's doing her job so if you don't have a computer and you don't know which coil it is and it's not telling you, pull all your plugs and look for these fouled plugs because this definitely could give you an issue. And also, if you look here, this is number one. And it goes one, two, three, four, five, six down the line here. So let me throw a new plug and coil on number four here. We'll put number three back and we'll fire it up. All right, let's clear all of our faults. I already got a full report. Now we're clear, let's fire it up. Oh, and I was wrong too. These are 400 Verados. Start them both up. Make sure we got no miss on the uh, starboard side here. Sounding good. Still loud, she's kind of out of the water a little bit. But she's pumping good. Well good, it was just a uh, coil problem. The motor sounds good. You definitely need all six of those cylinders in order for that thing to run right because you have 400 horsepower and six cylinders. So if one of those cylinders is down, you lose a lot of power. The boat probably won't run correctly. Anyway, back to you, uh, future me. All right, she is installed. All of our snaps are in. It's good and tight. So that's it for this one. And we're actually going to hop across the street here to a Boston Whaler. So I'll see you over there. We made it. And this is a 280 Whaler. It's actually 10 years old. Very nice condition here. Customer definitely takes care of it, keeps this thing completely covered. Obviously the cover is off for me here, you knew I was coming, but even the cushions look good. But we are working on the toilet system here. The vacuum flush system has a failed pump, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to film that because I gotta really basically squeeze myself in that hole, but I at least wanna show you how the system works so maybe you can understand a little bit because this is basically the same system on brand new boats. They've used the same system for a long time because it works. So let me show you what we're doing. You gotta keep that fan on me. Tell you what, it's a lifesaver here. It's 100 degrees already and it's 10 in the morning. So we have our vacuum tank here, which is the pooper tank. And this motor right here has failed. And it's just a diaphragm. Basically what this thing does is creates a vacuum. It's just like a plunger. You're plunging your toilet. It's doing the same thing over and over with this diaphragm here and it's pulling pressure into this tank. So it sucks vacuum here, and there's a pressure switch here that's a spring, and it basically, there's two wires here. Once it hits a certain point, it turns this pump off, and then you have vacuum in your tank. I'll show you what the toilet does. Oh, here's our new pump. I gotta put a Deutsch connector on it, but brand new. See, there's a little vacuum piece up here, and it just spins up and down on the motor here. Pretty fancy. We go down into our head here. 
and you have every toilet is different on how they actually there's some that are push button there's some that uh, there's a lever for your foot and it all depends on what you have but you need water from your water tank in order to basically keep this seal good Get in here like touching toilets but we're going to show you some here so if you look inside there there is a round um, basically seal and then when you hit this it opens up that seal so what happens is that's where the vacuum is created underneath that seal so if you have a bad seal here that vacuum pump might continually run because it just keeps sucking the vacuum out of the toilet so it's a good idea to keep this thing either lubed or water in it so that that seal doesn't dry out and do that to you and then once it rebuilds vacuum it turns off again then you have a couple sensors for like you know vacuum pump breaker here which is tripped because the pump's bad then you got your overboard discharge which is another pump that pumps it out into the water when you're you know five ten miles out whatever the stipulation is and you also have on the back i'll show you real quick you got this guy right here which you can hook to a marina and they can suck it out that way too so it's pretty simple but uh this is not going to be the easiest position to be in here to get that pump out of there and i hope those screws come out of there because it has definitely uh been in here for 10 years since this is a 10 year old boat so let me get myself in here and get this changed out and i'll get back to you and we'll see if it works so we are back and i have everything plugged in and it's all working but unfortunately his tank is full he's got to get it pumped out the pump turned on created vacuum and flushed it one time and then it recycled itself and now it won't flush anymore because it's got sensors in the tank to stop it from working if the tank's full so he's gonna have to get the tank pumped out but we are good you can see I tied up the wires too real good so that there that motor spins and it's kind of open right there so when it's spinning you could hit those wires so I tied them up good so it's not gonna hurt anything here and uh, should be good to go but now I gotta get out of this hot box here and turn my batteries off Everything checked out good here. He's just got to get his tank pumped out or get out there and pump it out in the ocean. But uh, from now until Wednesday, I actually, well, my birthday is Friday. And if you believe it, I will be 42 on Friday. And Wednesday, next Wednesday, I have jury duty for the first time here in Florida. And I've been here for 20 plus years. So that'll be fun. And uh, I'll try to film between now and then. And I got a day off, obviously. Friday's my birthday. I got my kids, all that fun stuff. So. I'll get another video up. We'll film as I go here. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. And I will see you next time. Later. Tell you what, I love when people have these super fast motors on these lifts. And good gear ratio. Because I've waited plenty of hours waiting for boats to get down on lifts. It seems to be part of the headache. It's like waiting for an elevator. You know how fast that is. Gotta love it. <laughs>